أولم ير الإنسان أنا خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين. Welcome to another video. Wasim Ismail welcoming you to another discussion. Today we're going to be talking about an interview that uh, was done by RTE, Ireland's National Public Service, with uh, Stephen Fry. And uh, his question, or the question that was asked to Stephen Fry was this whole meaning of life. And basically I've, I've taken the liberty and the time to um, write down what Stephen Fry said about God and about what he thinks of God and you know his perception of it and what he believes about it. So these people uh, that, were, that were interviewing Stephen Fry asked him the question and said, uh, and allow me to read it, uh, what will Stephen Fry say to God if it is all true? And his response is, bone cancer in children. What's that about? Um, first of all, this is a very flawed argument, number one, uh, for, for a very good reason. The first reason I would like to say and point out is that you can ask the same question, or God can ask you the same question. I'm not speaking on behalf of God right now because uh, that situation on the day of resurrection is going to be much greater than you'll ever even imagine for you to even have the nerve to ask God why He did something. In fact, in the Quran, we're told that uh, He is not asked about what He does, but you'll be asked. This is what we're told. We will be asked about what we do, not Him. Uh, the response to what you're saying or suggesting, or anyone for this matter, God might say to you, or I'm going to say to you, um, as, a, as a human being like you, who just can, is going to discuss and debate with you about this, what about murder and rape? So how do you think you're going to answer that question? You're the servant, you're the slave, you know, you're, you're talking about, a, a, according to you, a hypothetical situation that uh, you're going to meet God and you're going to have a face-off confrontation with Him, you know, you're, you're entertaining the possibility as an atheist or whatever you might call yourself that, oh, if I ever reach that point, I'm going to ask God this and this, and I'm going to hold Him accountable, I'm going to hold this and that. The reality is that we as human beings are, are going to be the ones that will be held accountable, not God. Um, and, and if you really were to appreciate Allah, as we call Him in Islam, or God, you would know that He does not oppress anyone, and that every evil thing that we may perceive as human beings, there is something that good that, that's good that comes out of it. But of course, to the shadow-minded, this may not be very obvious. So, bone cancer in children, you think what might be the good thing that comes out of that? Well, we as believers in Islam, believers in the hereafter, in the day of resurrection, believe wholeheartedly that if someone was oppressed in this world, if someone was wronged in this world, if someone was uh, harmed in this world, that God in His justice and infinite mercy, that encompasses everything, will make it up to this individual. In fact, in Islam, we're told about uh, a narration a tradition of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, where the most happiest person, the biggest tyrant on this on this planet, the one that did the worst possible things on the day of resurrection, the last day, he'll be taken and put into hellfire for just one instance, a very short, brief moment. And then he'll be asked, this person, have you seen any good? Have you enjoyed anything? And he'll say, I haven't seen any good and I haven't enjoyed a single thing. And on the contrary, you'll have someone who was the worst, uh, the one with the, with the worst life, you know, suffering and, and death and sicknesses and diseases and all those kinds of things you can imagine. And he'll be put into paradise for a split of a second as well. And he'll be asked, have you seen any evil, any harm, any suffering in this life? He'll say no. So this concept of time that we have that has been created that we're in right now, to us it seems like a long time, but according to God it's, it's, not, it's not very long. It's, in fact, the day of resurrection, as we were told in the Quran, is very close. It's not far away. Anything that's close is near. Anything that's coming up is near. That's what we believe. So we should hold ourselves accountable, Stephen Fry and anybody else who has this kind of mentality. Why did this human being murder? Why did this human being steal? Why did this human being rape? Why did this human being oppress? This is the question we should be asking. And then he says, how dare you? How dare you create a world where there is such misery that is not our fault? It's not right. It's utterly evil. Uh, sorry, utterly, utterly evil. Uh, why, should I, why should I respect a capricious, mean-minded, stupid God? Wow. Who created the world which is so full of injustice and pain? Well, these are philosophical questions about the how and the why of things. And this is where people deviated when it comes to the belief in God because they started questioning uh, things which are beyond our human comprehension. 
you know, even for those who don't believe in God, if they understand anything about theology, they should understand that the belief in God means that God is above and beyond everything. And He is no, he's not an equal to us. We're not an equal to Him. So we can never really understand Him and comprehend Him fully. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's easy to understand that God is one and they created the universe. Nothing's hard about that. But to go and... Uh, and try to understand why God is a, a capricious minded, mean, stupid God. I mean, you're basically using your own limited human terms on the Creator who made you and knows exactly what you're thinking every single time of the day and is closer to you than your juggler vein in his knowledge. That's what you're trying to do. So you're talking about a world of injustice and misery. Um, I believe that we should, as human beings, be ashamed of ourselves because of how things are in today's world because most, most of what we do is because, or what happens to us is because of our own hands, what our own hands have brought forth. And then, of course, he's asked the question, um, and do you think you're not going, uh, and do you think you're going to get in, basically, or to go to paradise? And the thing is also that I just remembered now, before I continue with this question, and, uh, is that uh, God already in the Quran mentioned this, that, um, that the human being was created, and he knows what he was created from, yet he's an open opponent. I mean, you as a human being, you know, we think we're all that. No, we are a great creation of God, don't get me wrong, He's honored us and He's made us above all the creation and He's made everything subservient for us as human beings on earth. But to go on to um, be that kind of a, an opposition and that kind of a, you know, a, an enemy or, a, or a, um, trying to do a, a, a sort of a versus match with God and think that we can just be at His level and think that we can you know, tell Him this and tell Him that, you won't even be able to speak unless you're given permission on the resurrection, let alone being able to, to, to argue with God and to in fact, there's no excuse for the, for the atheist. You know, in Islam we believe that the inherent nature of the human being, no matter where you go, any uh, nation societies that were, dig, that were dug up by um, archaeologists or any anthropologists who studied, every nation on earth had believed in a god. Even the, the failed system of communism and socialism that we saw last century, you know, the, the state religion of, of the USSR at the time was atheism. And after the USSR collapsed and the, and the communist system collapsed, people who were um, forced to not believe in God, you know, some 83% according to current surveys, uh, believed in God, even in a co country where the state religion was atheism, basically. So we really have to reflect upon these things. So, you know, when you say that, that, we, uh, uh, that, that we are somehow on the level of God or we can actually challenge Him, I think you're really in for a very ugly surprise. No one can even imagine that. And now, of course, Stephen Fry says, I wouldn't want to get in on God's terms because his terms are wrong. And says that now if I died and it was Pluto, Hades, and it was the 12 Greek gods, then I would have, be, have been, I would have more track with it because the Greeks were, they didn't pretend not to be human in their appetites and in their capriciousness and in their unreasonableness. They didn't present themselves as all-seeing, all-wise, all-kind, beneficent, uh, because the, the God that created the universe, if, if it was created by God, is quite clearly a maniac. Uh, utter maniac, totally selfish, totally. We have to spend our life on our knees thanking him. What kind of a God would, would do that? Um, you know what's really interesting about all these arguments? And I want to tell this to other people that are listening about, about these kinds of explanations that we're going into right now. Every single argument that anybody has, any atheist, any polytheist, you can bring anybody. The Quran has a response. Now, if the response doesn't satisfy you, is a different story. That's up to you. If you want to be... Um, you know, hard-headed and not even listen or pay heed and use just basic common sense and not get into these philosophical arguments of how and why about something that's even above and beyond your imagination or comprehension, that's a different story altogether. But uh, one verse in the Quran, actually interestingly enough, I just thought of that right away when I, when I heard him say this for the first time, that if those who are called on besides God, like these Greek gods and you know, these, all these false myth, mythical deities, that we see people believing in Vishnu and, and, and Brahman and all these names that people created that have that God has sent down no authority. When these are called upon, or when I'll just I'll start with this because it's the verse in the Quran that actually says it in this order. That if God, Allah, the one God, is mentioned, their hearts become stiff and they just back out from that and they don't want to have anything to do with it. But if those who are called that are besides God, meaning the false gods, they're happy. So Stephen Fry did exactly that. He would be happy with Greek gods, with, with uh, fantasies and, uh, and, and uh, names that people created that God has sent down no authority for. There's only one God, one creator. Uh, there are no rivals with him in creation. Only one creator is possible anyway. 
So he says, what kind of a God would that be? Or would do that? Yes, their world is very splendid. Well, this is probably the only thing that he said in his interview which was, uh, which was good. But it also has in it insects whose whole life cycle is to borrow, bureau into the eyes of children and make them blind, etc., etc., etc. Yes, their world is splendid. Exactly. You have been created as a human being with the free will to choose between right and wrong. Exactly. Yes, there is evil and there is good in this world. Everything goes back to God in the end. He created the human beings with the ability to do good or to do bad, to be uh, righteous or to be evil. It's as simple as that. So you're going to tell me that someone who uh, commits an act of murder or rapes or steals or does any kind of crime, uh, this is somehow God's fault? You know, it's just like you blame, uh, you say, oh, it's a natural disaster or, or, or a hurricane or whatever the case might be. You know, these imbalances in the, in the environment that we see today, many of them, whether you call it global warming or whatever you want to call it, much of it is the evil of our own hands. That we've, the things that we've done as human beings because of how greedy we are, how materialistic we've become. And of course, the atheist idea is this is all you've got. You're going to stay in this world. You have to enjoy the most you can possibly enjoy. And what's holding you back from stealing and killing and raping? Your own personal human uh, instinct will do that for you. Well, if it works for you or anybody else, how do you guarantee that it's going to work for, for, for other people besides you and your friends who you know will not do such a thing? It makes absolutely no sense. So then he goes on to say, so you know atheism is not just about believing that there isn't, not believing there's a God, but on the assumption that there, assumption there is one, what kind of God is he? It's perfectly apparent. He's monstrous, utterly monstrous, and deserves no respect whatsoever. The moment you banish him, your life becomes simpler, purer, cleaner, worth more worth living in my opinion. You want to live a life and have this belief in your head that this is it, this is all there is to it. And all we hear atheists talk about and say is, well, the next thing we have to do is we have to go into outer space and we have to discover planets and we have to work together as a species so we don't go extinct. You know, this whole Malthusian, Thomas Malthus, the economist, you know, this pessimistic, very negative perception of the world where things are going to run out, the environment is going to turn on us and all these kinds of beliefs that we have. When the reality is we have on earth much more than we'll ever need. The problem we have today with the capitalist system and, all the, and the systems we have today that are in place, the, the monetary system, is because there's, there's poor administration. There's, there's no distribution of, of wealth that was equal or, or fair for anybody. So, we, you know, people are interested in, in, in exploring um, life on, out, on other planets and, you know, somehow making life better for everybody. Well, why don't we start by cleaning up our own backyard? Before you start blaming God for problems on earth, why don't you blame yourself and look at yourself and what you're doing? You know, someone someone goes and steals something from the store or someone kills someone else and, oh, God made me do it. No, He didn't make you do it. You have free will. You chose. And you might, then the argument, of course, will go on and say things like, oh, well, if God uh, knew that I was going to do this, why did He create me in the first place? Or if He knew I was going to go to hellfire, why did He create me in the first place? I just love these why questions and how questions that we ask. Let's say that God created you and I right now and he knows, of course, he's the creator. He knows exactly what we're going to do. This is only befitting of him to be the creator, to know everything that's going to happen. He created time after all. He created us. He knows when we're going to die. He knows everything about us. But if he created you, for example, or I, and then he created me and he forced me into the hellfire, what will I say? That is unjust. I wasn't given a chance. I wasn't given a fair uh, try, to, to, try to, to try to gain God's pleasure and try to be a good believer so I can attain eternal bliss. This is the argument that somebody will have. But no, you're given your 60 or 70 or 80 or 100 years to live and to figure it out. And God didn't leave you to figure it out yourself. He sent you messengers and prophets. He sent you people to warn you throughout time to tell you, hey, this life is not all there is to it. You're a human being. You've been blessed with something called free will. You have to choose between right and wrong. You have to obey and, and uh, worship the one who created you. No one has the right to be worshipped except the one that created you. No one else. Not your own personal opinion, not your own or desire or anything else for that matter. And plus another thing I want to mention here which, which relates to the point which I'll end off with because I like to keep my videos as short as possible. I'm sure there's a lot of other things we can talk about later on that will open up doors to um, other topics. But we human beings, or you have the humanist or whoever says, oh, we don't need religion to be good people. We could just figure it out ourselves. Well, why is it that most people are doing evil things on the earth today? Why are there, why are there tyrants that are killing masses and masses of people using weapons of mass destruction and all kinds of really evil ways of killing people. Look at all the evil that's happening in the world today, whether, whether it's under religion, uh, political ideology, or what have you. We as human beings now say, well, we have laws, right? We have laws which we can um, bring these people to justice and, and kill them and, and take their life away because they killed somebody else. Granted. Well, let me ask you this question. Someone comes along, a tyrant, um, a, a very evil individual, and he kills off 100,000 people. You know, he kills off 100,000 people. Somehow he does it. 
and he does it. And we, and everything we can possibly do, we try to get our hands on that person because we want to bring them to justice. We want them to pay for what he did. We want him to serve his life sentence in prison or, 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 or capital punishment or whatever else you want. But then this person is never found and we end up finding out that this person killed themselves. Murder, suicide as you call it. Where's your justice now? The monotheist, the pure Muslim, the monotheist believes wholeheartedly that God is just and that's why there's a hereafter and that's why this life was not created as a, as a, as a, as a place of play and, and, and just passiveness. There's a, there's a day of judgment and there's going to be accountability and every single deed that you and I have done will, become, will come into the court of God and will be held to account. Because that person who killed 100,000 people, these 100,000 people are now dead. This person killed himself. You never got to this person. You never made them serve justice according to our measures and our terms. And they're gone. They killed themselves. So they had it all. They had money. They had fame. They had women. They had uh, power. All that great stuff they had, right? And then they died. They killed themselves. We didn't get our hands on that person. We didn't make them suffer for what they did to these 100,000 people. And then what about these 100,000 people? Where's their right? You know, people talk about, oh, why did this baby have to die at such a young age? Oh, why did this? It's not fair. It's not right. Every single evil thing that we see and uh, that we perceive to be evil, there's something good that will come out of it in, a, in the end. Whether we see it or not, understand it or not, is a completely different story. So my advice to people like Stephen Fry, and I, I don't think Stephen Fry is going to listen to me because, you know, who am I to listen to? Be, to be someone to listen to. But of course, you have 6 million people who listen to him on his YouTube channel. And my address is to people who observed people like this talking and speaking who, who are giving off these ideas and these, these, these false notions that uh, we somehow figured it out as human beings and we can go out and do whatever we want without any accountability or anything like that. Well, you know, you talk about God being unjust. No, there's justice. There's a hereafter. There's a paradise and there's a hellfire. Just like it is just to put somebody in paradise for what they have done in this life of good and they believed in God as being the only creator and they worshipped him alone, this is justice. This person deserves eternal bliss. And someone else who disbelieves, who does evil, shouldn't that person pay for their dues? And yes, they will be in hell for eternity. And you think, how could a God do that? How could a God put someone in hell, in, in hell for eternity? Well, how could a God put somebody in paradise for eternity for the good they've done? You have to take it both ways and understand it both ways. So, Go back to your inner nature as a human being. Enough of the denial. Externally you can deny it all you want and you can say that no, no God exists. But deep down inside, you sit in the corner and think about it in the dark somewhere. And you be honest with yourself and think about it. And believe what, you, what your inner self tells you and your conscience tells you. You've been created for a purpose. And that purpose is to worship Allah, to worship God alone without ascribing any partnership with Him in worship. You've only got one chance to figure it out. You have a life which is finite, that will end. You're not going to end. You're going to move on to the next realm. And then it's either eternal bliss or eternal punishment. You think about that. Myself personally, anybody else who comes and tells you this, we have absolutely no gain to make out of this. We don't want money. We don't want fame. We don't care about what people think of us. Our duty as Muslims is to invite you to the proper creed of Islam, to your purpose in life, to purify you. So contrary to what Stephen Fry says about living a simpler, purer, cleaner, more worth living life in his opinion. Um, you're entitled to your opinion, Stephen Fry, and anybody else who has that opinion. But if you believe this is life is all we've got, and that's the end of it all, nothing is stopping anybody from getting as much pleasure and bliss and, and money and whatever you want to call it in this life at the expense of others. And that's exactly what we're seeing today. Take heed. Be careful. Think. Reflect. We have an intellect. We've been endowed with this intellect. We're different than all the other creatures on earth. Human beings are great when it comes to the conscience that they have, the conscience that they have, and the reflection and the ability to comprehend and to put systems of thoughts together. So with this, I hope people take this uh, little talk to heart. And I'm sorry it took a little bit longer today, but these things have to be addressed. And it's my duty as a human being to advise other fellow human beings about this because, hey, if I feel or if I know for sure and I do know for sure that there's something good out there, why would I not want you to have a share in that. That'd be selfish now, wouldn't it? Have a great day.